please tell everybody who you are. I'm Barb Alberson, and I'm Senior Deputy Director for Policy and Planning for our local health department, Public Health Services. And Barb, um, tell the audience a little bit of uh, a background on yourself and then also um, the department that you work with. My background is I've been a public health professional all my adult life, and my area of expertise has been community education. And not so much telling people what they need to know, but giving people the tools they need so that they can do something and act and feel competent to take care of their own health. And at the health department now, doing policy work, it's really helping to advance some of our ideas in a more broader and more purposeful way. And so, um, Barb, you're engaged in um, the reInvent um, you know, South Stockton movement, and we're here today at their second annual resident conference. Um, thank you again for taking the time to share your story with the audience. Um, tell us a little bit of why you um, wanted to get engaged in reInvent South Stockton. Well, when we talk about public health, it's different than medicine. Public health is all about prevention. It's all about trying to ensure that nothing ha ever happens so people stay healthy. And reInvent is a perfect place to do this kind of work in that uh, we're not addressing why you need to go to the doctor or that you have to take care of yourself better so you don't get diabetes. Of course, we care about that. But these days we're talking about, we call it going upstream, but it's what are the social determinants? What are the conditions in the community that make it difficult for individuals to be healthy? What are the uh, environmental conditions that make it very tough? For example, it's hard to have a healthy uh, menu for your kids if there's nowhere to buy groceries that are healthy. It's hard to be able to uh, have physical activity if you're frightened to let your kids out of your sight and there's no park close by that's safe. So we work on things that impact health and that's what reInvent's all about. So it's ideal in terms of a public health um, advocacy to help make that happen. And to tell you the truth, the working with the colleagues that I'm working with uh, is the passion and the compassion and the roots they have in the community uh, make it all that much more exciting and purposeful. And so what would you say are some of the biggest um, issues you know, that face uh, a resident of South Stockton with regards to their health and then in turn their um, prosperity sense of well-being. We actually did a focus group at the summit last year about uh, health as part of our community-wide community, uh, community health needs assessment that we did with the hospitals. And uh, residents get it. They really talked about things like blight and uh, activities for youth and dogs that are stray dogs that frighten everyone and no access to uh, healthy food. So the things that impact health are right front and center on their agenda for helping make things happen. And then when you further explore, we're talking about jobs, economic vitality, and a safe and stable place to live top the list. And for me, you can't talk about health if you don't have a stable, healthy place to live and a way of, of having an income. And so you're on the steering committee. Um, what would you say from your findings and from the information gathered, the residents' participation, where, um, where would you like to see or what is um, reInvent South Stockton doing to try to execute some of the findings and some of the strategies that the organizations come up with? reInvent is different from anything I've ever been a part of and I've been in this world doing this kind of work for decades. It's different. I have never seen this kind of community engagement that's authentic. You know, that sounds a little bit like jargon, but it truly is seeking out and using the voice of the community. As you can see here today, uh, most of the volunteers are kids who live in South Stockton, and it's just delightful to see all these young folks who truly want to make a difference showing up and finding ways to do that because nothing's worse than giving false expectations, false hopes, and promises. So our commitment is to make sure that we carry out what we can do to help them do what they want to do. And so what would you like to see as the best outcomes of your efforts and reinvent South Stockton's efforts? The fact that we tie political will to social will, and that sounds jargony again, but that's having a voice for giving voice to the uh, 
deciders, the decision makers, so they understand and value that they need to invest and they need to pay attention and they need to uh, give extra attention actually to South Stockton. They've been ignored in some ways uh, in terms of infrastructure and, and uh, uh, new buildings, etc and uh, apartment complexes that get uh, permitted. It's anything you think of across the board, they have had very little investment and th that we need to turn that around. And in order for the deciders to listen to us, the us has to include the community demanding that they get their fair sh shake. And do you see that happening? Um, I mean, obviously we have Michael Tubbs who's helped create, reinvent um, South Stockton, but also running for mayor, but do you feel like the um, political powers that be at Stockton are listening and willing to do the hard work? In a way, they haven't before, and I haven't been here long enough to know the long-term history, but some of the uh, players who we work with all the time, it's resonating and they're explaining and are proud of the fact that they're seeing changes that they never would have seen before. Uh, for Just for example, um, the closing of the New Wave Market, the drug-infested New Wave Market. It was something they were trying to do for 10 years, and it happened. The cleanup of all the uh, playgrounds, it's happening. Um, having Michael has been a catalyst that... This is Michael Tubbs. Yes. It's been a catalyst that it's very rare to have a political animal uh, be a part and invested so heavily and deeply and be a part of the movement. Usually you're knocking on the door trying to get the ear of the uh, establishment and now not only do we have it, but he has a way of asking for things that we could never ask for and for pushing the agenda in a way that we never could. And he does it in such a kind, supportive way uh, that he's making friends where we might make enemies. And so, Barbara, how could someone who's listening to the show get engaged, whether they're a resident of South Stockton, a resident of Stockton, or a resident of you know, Central Valley, for example? Well, we have events. Oh, gosh. At least once a month, we have a park cleanup. The last park cleanup we had, we had um, oh, at least 100 people there. 60 of them were young people. They paint benches. They pick up trash. They fix things that are broken. Uh, we put in an actual a playground. A, uh, at one of our parks. We got some funding from uh, Kaiser Foundation to do that. So there's always that kind of clean up, spruce up, beautify activity going on. But we have uh, many, many activities that relate to some of the uh, changes we want to see happen. Like there's an education subcommittee working with Stockton Unified School District and the new superintendent of schools to ensure that we get more of our youngsters on track to graduate uh, ready for college, what they call those the A through G requirements. So they're, depending on people's interest, uh, we can do triage and find a place where it needs some additional uh, support and attention and passion. And that's all we really want. We want people with passion and commitment that are here for the long term. This is not uh, something we're going to do uh, in the next two or three years. We have a 20-year game plan. Our promise zone is a 20-year game plan. And recently, I know that um, the organization applied for the Promise Zone. They weren't um, chosen by the feds, so I imagine you're going to probably go at it again. Yes, but it's not necessarily something that is uh, all or nothing. Right. We're doing it anyway. So you're using the construct of what the requirements of a Promise Zone are. What are what are all the elements of it that you're just executing it? And what it allowed us to do and what it was important for us to do is it made us focus. It made us think about uh, the world in terms of indicators and really be um, upfront about what are the outcomes we're looking for rather than the feel-good, touchy-feely kind of we want to make a difference, which everybody does, but that's very vague. So Promise Zone has had us uh, go through the uh, process of zeroing in and being specific about what we need to do and where. So it's been a gorgeous process for us. So whether or not we got the designation, we're thrilled with where we are, and we will go through it again, and uh, I think we would have a good chance. Um, but like I say, it's not our end-all, be-all. We're there anyway. Right. So turning back to health and health policy, 
in indicators. Um, in your mind, what would be the indicators of success within the construct of health and health policy? Well, health is the kind of thing that shows up 40 years from now when you talk about chronic disease, for example, uh, because an awful lot of our burden of disease is uh, obesity and diabetes and heart disease, asthma, and it's difficult to see uh, changes in the short term. So uh, long-term changes by making the community more walkable, making it safe to go outside and be physically active, is a huge, huge benefit. Uh, obesity is a risk factor for every chronic disease you can think of. So if we can get folks off their fannies and outdoors and active, that's very, very, very good. Also, if we have access to healthy food, and we're doing a lot of work on that arena right now with what we call healthy retail, which is working with the little mom and pop stores uh, to be able to get them to market and uh, have uh, signage and storage so that they can have healthier fruits and vegetables, even if they're not a regular full-term uh, grocery store so that they can have something on the corner so that mom can run in and get a little bit, i.e. bananas uh, or oranges, uh, and uh, not have to worry about the, the just junk food on every corner. So working on chronic disease prevention is a long-term activity, but we do know that we have proxy measures, and working on obesity prevention, working on walkability and making the community so that it's safe, uh, not just in terms of safety in terms of violence prevention, but safe in terms of a good infrastructure so that uh, we don't have pedestrians and bicyclists getting hit by cars and speeding cars. That's another problem. So there's many factors that point to having a healthy, thriving community. But like I said, those social determinants are the proxy measures for us because here's the, the t most telling statistics, I think, for us is that Lincoln Village, which you can throw a rock at it from South Stockton, it's, it's what, six miles away. The average life expectancy is over 90, degree, 90 years of age. In South Stockton, in areas of South Stockton, the average life expectancy is 69 years of age. So you tell me if it's not the environmental conditions that make the difference and not the fact that people are not being healthy in what they do every day. So we have to work on the environmental conditions of policies that um, really have to do in, with investment to ensure that the community thrives. Thank you very much, Barbara. That was great. Well, fun. Thank you.